Everybody, we are back. The Smoking Word Podcast, episode number seven, I think. I always forget what number we at, but again, we want to thank everybody who's been tuning in on the SoundCloud and on YouTube. Um, where right now they're trying to hook up the what you call it, the iTunes. Yeah. So we'll look out for the iTunes coming up soon, and we got a lot of other stuff dropping. So look out for that. And we are back today. I'm I, Freddie's back on the mic. We're coming at you from Long Beach. We're in the back of Dirty Mix fucking, what do you call this, record store. Record store headquarters. What's, is it, what's the, the name? Hub. The Hub. The Hub. The Hub. <laughs> We're in the Hub. But um, come check it out if you're in um, Long Beach. And, um, yeah, it's a cool shop. We, are, we have a very special guest today. We had to make this happen since we were here. And he was going to be here anyway. We can't get rid of him. Either, Snoop Dogg? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was either Snoop or our next guest. And I ain't going to even give him the introduction. I'm going to let Freddie give him the introduction because Freddie could probably set it up better. So I'll start with coming to you live from fucking the Minnesota <laughs> is the wild card, Matt Henderson. Oh. <laughs> Talk to your friend right there. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Chill. How you doing? Chill. Good to be here. All right. Good to see you. Where are, you where look, are we? You look young as ever. Um, but what, what, what feeling old, though, bro. Here, feeling buddy? old. <laughs> He's got Benjamin Button's <laughs> disease going on. This guy's getting younger every time I see him <laughs> aging the other way, man. Uh, we're, we're coming at you. Right now, we're in um, Long Beach, like we said. We're on the kind um, of the middle of a little short yeah, we're doing a Cali um, West California, Coast run. yeah, West Coast run with Strife, and um, since we were playing here, we knew Maddie. We were going to be seating. We, we we knew we were going to be seeing Maddie here, and we figured we'd take advantage and um, <clears throat> talk a little shit with him. If you guys don't know who he is, eh, he, ain't, he ain't nobody. No, no, <laughs> but yeah, no, but he's uh, an old school OG on the guitar and the New York hardcore scene, and he played for a lot of bands. We're going to have him give you a little quick recap. I know it already, but just in case you don't know who he is, Maddie, let the people out there know who you are, where you come from, and all that bullshit. <clears throat> well, I mean, I know you know. I've, I've always kind of considered myself really a composer more yeah. than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, you know what I am? I'm, I'm a guy who grew up... Uh, just loving punk rock and hardcore and was lucky enough to join one of uh, my all-time favorite bands one of the bands that made you know hardcore that exciting for me so you but, know. but let everybody know for where, where you were born where you came up what well, state okay yeah well i was born in in madison wisconsin right and uh but a lot of white people there uh, they, cheese. there are <laughs> like, yeah. A lot of yeah cheese cheese close to milwaukee which is a lot of beer right uh, right 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 and then, uh, yeah, I moved to Minnesota at a real young age, and that's basically where I grew up. And, uh, yeah. then uh, That's where you got into punk and all that stuff. Huh? What, yeah, what were you into first, punk? But what was your, what was uh, your in to the hardcore stuff? Not well, metal. It was more punk than anything. To music? Well, music, to music? Well, music was it, a lot it, of stuff. It, sure. It's kind of a... Um, it's weird, because we know Maddie. I, mean, <laughs> I know Maddie's the, family, man, the, so we the, know Maddie, you know? The... I mean, the introduction to music for me was through my father. He always, okay. he, you know, he had always, he always had a really nice stereo system in the house. Nice. He always uh, had a lot of a, a really big record a lot collection, of albums. A lot of and vinyls. would just play a lot of good stuff in the house. You know, yeah. I mean, for, especially for music at that time. But you know, I mean, he going through college, he was into like, you know, the rock, the metal of its of its era like Led okay. up yeah, yeah. deep the heavy, purple the heavy stuff of that era. yeah he did like the the heavier stuff of that era as well as other stuff too right um and then I, I, for me probably around like four or five years old i somehow just latched onto the beatles right which i think a lot yeah. of kids at a lot my of age kids probably do, yeah. did sure 
And from there, went straight to Kiss. Wow. And Kiss was That's right. right. You're a Kiss guy. I forgot yeah. that. Well, yeah, shit. You, you, like you like kissing guys, yeah. You like, <laughs> you kiss kiss. Guys. He's a kiss guy. <laughs> but, but, well, right, that's another, a kiss guy. That's another podcast. Yo, what up? Um, you know who you are out there. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but I mean, like 1977, dudes are like breathing fire. They look like superheroes. Yeah, They're playing like rock and roll. And you're like, yeah. you know. But the thing about it is a lot of people will be like, yo, what, you like that band? Those dudes are, you know, yeah. people used to say they're faggots, they're this, they're yeah. that. I never you know? th- looked at it that way. I always yeah. thought it was cool the way they looked, no. but I just never got in. It was before my time, I guess. So you, yeah. It was kind of like being punk rock. People, right. Yeah. It was you, very you, punk you were kind of outcast, yeah. even though they 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 had a lot of popularity. <laughs> right. So I I do when I look back, I feel like I was kind of already in that mode and like way. rebellious kind of. And my parents too yeah. were kind of hippie ish. Yeah. My my I mother mom, my mother used to is. go to like big anti war protests back in the day when it was like relevant. Right. You know when when we were still coming out of Vietnam and all that stuff. Wow. So you know and she'd be very vocal in the house. That's real punk rock. Yeah, that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 actually yeah. trying to you know. I mean, my my mother back in the day before it was a trend would like. I remember one time uh, we had fruit in the house, and I I said, "How can we don't have grapes?" And she said, "I'm not buying grapes." I'm like, "Why not?" She says, "Because I don't support the way the the workers are treated." In. Yeah. Wow. That's and amazing. me as a kid, I'm like, I, I, I just want, I just want grapes. grapes, you know. <laughs> Uh, but again, she was that was yeah. what she really believed versus like just great, being on man. some bandwagon. So I always kind of was hip to speaking your mind and being a little bit, you know, you didn't worry Thinking about things through, well, looking at it from different perspectives, that, and not caring if it wasn't cool or right. popular. Right. You know what I mean? So right. not conforming. Yep. Um, and that's to me. So when when I first started hearing about punk rock, it kind of made sense. Oh yeah, and I like the music. You know, the Sex Pistols were the first band that I really listened to, mm. punk rock. And I mean, I play that play that their first record in my car a lot. My boys love it. That's great. But but let me ask you this: How did you find out about the Sex Pistols? Who put you on uh, that? It's always somebody. Yeah, so my, somebody my dad always, yeah. my dad had a uh, subscription to Rolling Stone, which huh. which in the earlier days was like it looked like the Village Voice. You know how it's got the it's like a yeah, paper. It's like a not, paper. Yeah, like it's yeah. actually yeah yeah. So, um, and they were on the cover one year in 1977. That's crazy. That's crazy. And uh, That's I pretty just big. Yeah. And I just you know I just kind of bugged out on it. But it wasn't until years later that I really figured out. Oh, you know how it was too. I was a fan of Joan Jett. Nice. And there was some radio interview with her, and I recorded it, and they played songs that she liked that was an inspiration to her. And they played sick. "God Save the Queen," and I was like, "That's what they sound like," because that song's pretty good. You know, and I was like, that's... Because, you know, the stories I heard, like, yeah, Johnny Rotten, Sid Vicious, they blow their nose on people on the stage, yeah, and yeah. they spit, and, you yeah. know, all that. But that's the type of shit that, yeah. you know, that's not really true. That was, that was, yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. you know, goofy rumors. Right. Um, and then I heard the music. It's like, yeah, that's dope. Nice. So... <laughs> and then I, what? And then so from that, I hate that band. By the way, do you really? Have you re- I, 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 have you say, actually listened to the record? No, no, I don't want to say hate. I don't. I'm joking. It, I, I get it, but there's a lot of bands I hate, never, and that's just never been a punk. And uh, yeah, I was never a big punk guy. Yeah, well, yeah, and you know what it is. You know what I mean, it's like. S- some music either translates to you or it doesn't. And, and I'm just really, being an asshole yeah. right now by saying there's other bands that I hate more, like the Ramones. But we're going to oh, get into that not, later. See, I'm not, gonna, not, gonna, I got to admit, I, I'm not a Ramones fan. Thank you. I'm really thank not. You. And I, listen, I get it. I, I give them props for you know being pioneers oh, exactly. and setting it off. I give them all I the never props. Owned, I never owned I any them, music. They the not originals. my collection. I wouldn't be doing what it I do. Just, blah, blah, blah. It, I understand. It just doesn't speak to me. I agree. I give them respect. But I don't enjoy I agree. the music. Well, anyway, it definitely, I give them this much. They weren't as goofy. They weren't as goofy as the Ramones. And that's what I didn't like, the goofiness of that stuff. Uh, yeah, no, they weren't. They, they sound a little little rough around the edges and kind of, you know. Even if they were considered being, like, commercial for the real punk dudes at the time. Because some old punk dudes at the time probably talk shit yeah. on, oh, yeah. on, you know, on uh, Sex Pistols. You know, yeah. like, yeah. there's always somebody who's real. Uh, everybody's real. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But um, then, but when's the first time you got a, a lick of like of a hard, American hardcore? So, so and I started getting a little older and starting like probably just getting into high school and meeting other people who 
you know, I could tell. Well, we're you know, into like back in those days, you were punk rock, especially like you stood in out the, in the Midwest. Yeah, you stood out, and it was not fun. Yeah, I, I used to have dudes like you know, like biker type dudes, grown men. Right, and I was always like a skinny kind of little kid, very kind of timid. I wasn't, you know, yeah, uh, much. I wasn't a real force to be reckoned with. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, but I had like a crazy ass mohawk or big spikes or some shit. And these dudes would want to fucking murder me. <laughs> and I'd be like, up. I mean, they just they want to. Ignorant. Then they tell me, yo, Ignorant. you know, like, yo, we're going to fucking kill you, you fucking punk rocker. Let's fuck them in the ass. Just like <laughs> jailhouse dudes getting like, yeah, getting you know, we're like little grimy, kids. We're fucking grimy about it. Yeah. And so. Uh, How old are you? What? 15, 14, 14 15? 15, 15, 15 oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. And, and uh, so, but by that time, it was still, there was still punk rock, right? Because like GBH, right, Discharge. Right. right. But then you knew what hardcore was, which was harder, which was harder, yeah, the harder, harder stuff. Yeah, for which I always rock. loved. I, GBH, you know, respect. That's why GBH. I never really liked Oi as much because Oi was kind of bouncy like to me. I like it I, more now. I yeah. loved, I loved Oi. I, I loved Oi, but I never liked punk rock. So it's weird. But, but I, you, I, I but, know what but you mean. But you like GBH? No, GBH is discharge. Different. But those were like almost hardcore. GBH bands. was like the king of of like the real British punk, punk. The, but the dirty punk, right? And yeah. I like that, and that was Discharge, which ended up became you know becoming yeah what the American bands like yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. you know and and but so it was one just big mix well and plus two back in those days you would probably try to buy any record that was put out because it's like you felt like you're part of this movement and like oh this band you know I don't know Black Flag Dead Kennedys right uh, what I say negative approach yeah uh, minor threat yeah. You know? Those are the bands. I, I just missed. By the time I just started listening to Minor Threat, they had just so just being up. in that circle of people, yeah. you started to pick up on what was what was happening with the American hardcore stuff. Yep. the early stuff. Yeah, of approach Minor Threat, blah blah blah, and Agnostic Front. Agnostic Front, of course. Victim in Pain. I yeah. I can't remember who I was talking to about this, but you know, there was a time where New York hardcore wasn't like. I no, I don't think. No, it really wasn't. It was <laughs> it was it was I remember that time. Agnostic Front Victim in Pain was just another kick ass record in yeah. the collection of all the other records we listened to and we happened to know they're from New York. You, you know, you, yeah. you look at the that That's what they were representing. Gatefold, That's that who they were representing that faction, but that faction wasn't established. <laughs> well, I think it was there. Yeah. It but was we, there, but for we sure didn't there. know anything about it, right? right? It, right. They were, it was, it was, I mean, globally it wasn't established. Not at all. Back then they were hardcore bands from New York. It wasn't New York hardcore exactly. bands. Exactly. It, it, you knew about New York because of Maximum Rock and Roll. Right. And because they... Talk you, shit about talk it. Talk shit. Yeah. Uh, and then Agnostic Front being, you know, that band that put out Victim and Pain. Right. and Controversial shit being well, said. Well, you, you blah, look blah, blah, at blah. that that original Victim and Pain record with yeah. the gatefold and yeah. that picture on the oh. inside is yeah, fucking lo- yeah, hard as hell, bro. Brutal. And so, you you know, you're like, yo, these dudes are... You know, yeah, they're the real thing. They're crazy. Yeah, but again, like we're saying, it was just a, another punk band that put out a great record. It was not like, oh, I'm into New York hardcore. Right. It wasn't until a little bit later that, well, yeah, probably two years after that, because because AF never made it to the Twin Cities early on. No. Um, well, as a matter of fact, what, never what played the, f- the Twin Cities until I joined until you band. until yeah. Blind Approach. Yeah. Right. No, until no, until I was in Agnostic Front. Never played. The I thought Twin they, I thought you met them before that. I did. Okay, but uh, not, but not in, not in, uh, not in the Twin, not nah, in the Twin Cities. Nah, because that's just it. So eventually, yeah. I started you go. I playing, mean, playing in a local band. Right. You know, we're just friends. Yeah. Which I think is really a big part of it too, right? It wasn't right. like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to be this amazing band or whatever. So we're that just, was your first band, right? So we're just kids that yeah. enjoyed the music and played. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and, uh, but we wound up getting decent enough where we were like. Every big band that would come through, we'd play. We'd open up for them. Right. You know? What was the name of the band? Blind, Blind Approach. Approach. Blind Approach. That was the band I got. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> yeah. Let, let everybody out there know. So your first band was called Blind, Blind Approach. Approach. Yeah. All right. Go look that yeah. up, kids, and check out. Um, he got eBay shirts for sale. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's under Hoya Rock at eBay. But um, yeah, that's his first band. He got a hundred. Nah, he don't. You don't got too many bands. But all right, that's no, your yeah, first yeah, band. Yeah, yeah. No, actually not. Nah, not no, really. No, not really. Huh. He's not like Craig. Yeah, that uh, Craig was like in every New York band hardcore home. band ever. It was a band home. Yeah, band, <laughs> band slut. Yeah. 
Maddie's only been three bands, right? Yeah, technically. Uh, well, now yeah. now you have other projects. So now you so blind approach is, is you get together with some with some guys. Get in your age guys, gr- we grew up in, in up, your Chip? age. Chip. Chip. Chip, what up, Chip? Guys in your age group that were into like similar stuff, and then seventy year yeah. old guy, and you decided to go the hardcore route because that was the stuff you were leaning towards. That was a time where hardcore was really getting exciting because you know you had Metallica right. putting out like Ride the Lightning and right. uh, uh, Master Puppets. And it's like, yo. And then you'd see these dudes with long hair wearing a Misfits t-shirt or a Discharge or a GBA. Or even an AF shirt. Yeah. 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 And, and, and uh, they was like, well, shit, this is, this is amazing. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I remember when, when those records came out. Now as a, as a guitar player, I'm starting to play a new style that really we all fucking take for granted today. I mean, yeah. I'm going back over 25 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before that, there was a time where hardcore had no metal influence. I mean, right. I remember seeing the Chromags for the first time, and I mean, they sounded like a metal band to me. But, but dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like groove and, and a, a and drummer that sounded professional thing, yeah. wasn't falling all over the place. The guitars were in tune yeah. and they were tight. They sounded like a pro band that a lot of hardcore bands always, you know, up to that point sounded real sloppy and kind of yep. crazy. And so, you know. It was a fun time where where this cro- at crossover. That's what it was, right? right? Metal right. crossover. Um, even Storm Stormtroopers of Death. I, lo- I that was a. F- I mean, I love that record when it came out. You know, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Billy Milano. Yeah, shout out to Billy. But but rewind real quick. You're known for playing the guitar. Yeah. What when did you what made you pick up the guitar and when did you Stop pick up the guitar playing Matt Henderson man this guy's a legend man this guy's a, <laughs> we're like yeah, he's been in a couple bands <laughs> let's, let's talk about it <laughs> no but let's start let people out there know um, cause you're known for your, your guitar yeah. playing yeah when did you when did you start playing guitar why did you start playing guitar yep. and what was your first guitar uh well I started playing the drums I had uh an right, that's right I had an uncle who actually went to Berkeley College of Music for he didn't graduate he was there for I don't know a couple of semesters but you know I knew that I had my one of my dad's brothers you know uh went to Boston to go to this for music and he had this drum kit and uh every time I'd go visit uh my grandma and it'd be there I'd sit down and just kind of make noise with it and then uh eventually my parents bought me like this toy drum kit and you know, How and then eventually I got like, a what real. Age, what age was that? Would you say? I got a real kind of like Bobby Brady drum kit <laughs> when I was like six years old. Nice, right? And uh, I used to turn Kiss records up real loud and, and, and just drum away. to it. And eventually, you know, I started to kind of be okay. Get a beat going. Yeah, 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 and then sound like a real drummer. Nice. And I, I was pretty good. I, I probably played till I was about ten, and then um, Van Halen came out. Mm. And, and I, I knew this. I knew this kid who had an electric guitar, and we used to. I used to convince him all the time because I wanted to play. Yeah. I wanted to play music, and I said, "Look, you got that guitar. I got drums. Let's just start making noise." And right, he would do it, but it was never really all that much for him. He kind of he'd get bored with it real quick. I'd be like, "Nah, come on, let's you know try to make up more music." And he <laughs> yeah. he couldn't play the guitar for shit. Right. And then at the school we were at, we knew this guy who was a. Um, Technically, he's a saxophone player mm-hmm. in like local R and B bands, nice. but he'd also play guitar. And he was just hanging out as our music teacher. I, the school I went to is pretty crazy. St. Paul Open School. Wait, what's okay. that Open School? Their slogan was "Freedom is Responsibility." Hey, <laughs> and uh, so you guys did whatever the fuck. Oh, uh, it was a mess, bro. Uh, <laughs> it was it was it was like a hippie nice. idea. Yeah, and it was supposed to be really like you know let the, you, there were no grades and like yeah yeah you called the teachers by their first names wow uh, oh, and it was supposed to be that's cool it was kind of cool I wish I was white for once in my life okay right so now. so so the idea is cool yeah but what the happens is, was cool, but is you you get all these kids together and they just run they run them up run them up bro I used to I, the shit that went on in that school crazy and I I mean my parents would let me go there for years wow. <laughs> There's no grades, bro. There's no That's, grades. You get evaluations. <laughs> no wonder you graduated. <laughs> yeah, no wonder you graduated. How did this guy graduate? And, we could and pl- graduated plus, it started too. to become like a dumping ground, like all the trouble kids that got kicked uh, out of every other yeah, school because it was an alternative. There was there was no. Yeah. There's the only school that, that, that couldn't turn them away. Yeah. So 
Um, <laughs> you can do anything in there. You'd be all right. So that this guy was our music teacher. I yeah. forgot why I got into that. But yeah, yeah. he was uh, he was the music teacher there. And uh, I remember telling my friend who played the guitar, I said, look, if you don't want to learn no more, give me a guitar. Yeah. Because this guy, I know he can teach. And he used to be able to... This guy used to be able to play any song on a record. Like, I'd bring a record in, yeah. and he'd listen to it, and all of a sudden, he'd start playing it. Wow, so he was a real music guy. And, and, and he, to... he would teach me. Yeah. So I'm like, holy shit. You know, now I'm learning like songs I'm hearing on record. Right. And then when Van Halen came out, I'm like... I mean, That's it. Yeah. It was, that was, it changed, was, it was on for you. Changed guitar playing for, you know... That was like a historical event. Yeah. So, so you, you, you're saying kind of that you like Eddie Van Halen a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I, the biggest influence for me as a guitar player, next to James Hetfield, probably. Wow. Like on the rhythm side. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. You can't, how could you? Yeah. Like when you listen to old Blind Approach riffs and stuff, clearly we were, we were like a third Metallica, a third Agnostic Front. And, 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 uh, and they're probably well, Chromag <laughs> slash Chromag. slash uh, the Go Go's. You, you know, you know what uh, AF era we <laughs> right really set, sounded right. like was was, uh, right, right, was Liberty and Justice. Yeah. Ah, nice, yeah. nice. So tell us. Let's fast forward. That's great. No, that's great. That's a, that's a, that's a great uh, foundation that you have there. And you know, touching on what you were talking about before with your dad, that that's you know. Obviously, these days it's different, you know. Like that, I was trying to tell, you know, talking to my wife the other day about that kind of stuff. Like, man, I miss like vinyls and like putting records on and like yeah. hearing that crackling sound. And then totally. like that's how I grew up too. Like I got into music same way because of my family. Yeah, all different types from mm. Latin music to hardcore. Yeah, and like you know, man, those you know, I miss those days of like that was like a pastime for me. That was like sit there and you know well so not, not only that listen that to it but, but that, you had something to hold and look at yeah no yeah you read all the lyrics yep. you look at the pictures yep. it was like look at this crazy cover you know and and, and it was before the internet where that was all you had really yeah. you know what I mean like, the, like well, the info had to be on the yeah. record and, yeah. and it, it was a little bit more mysterious back then you're like you know you, you only had like one picture of the band and you know, you never really, you know, know exactly what they look like because it's just one picture, and so now you got this like real simple yeah, you, image in your head of what they look like, and shit. Now you got the internet where oh, you know crazy. you can see people taking a shit or whatever. Ooh, you know, yeah, you yeah, catch yeah. them, catch them in anywhere. It takes takes the mystery out of it completely. Yep. Yep. So, like, so, so before you were saying, so you got to see the Chrome mags. Agnostic, not agnostic, agnostic never made it over there. I, the, the, the first real band I saw was like Exploited and Black Flag, and you know, I mean, I'd seen bands, and then yeah. So, so you're going to shows, you, you're in a band, you're playing around. Like, yeah, shows solo or is pop bringing you like what well, or is it like, what, like what age? Are you well, we were lucky that they're all age. Okay, yeah. they were all age so shows going, going down. So but my dad, so would, my dad would take me if because that same club would have a uh, First Avenue. Yeah. You know, wow. that's Prince. Prince's club, right? Yeah, yeah. So, all right, when you, all right, so you're playing around with a. How, how does it work? Where how does how do you get the call from AF? That I was just gonna say. How did you meet them? And because yeah. you they had a note, you you met them before the, yeah. they asked you to play, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to play with them, right? Yep. So, like I was saying, every band that would come through, every you know national band, we'd open for. And Chromex? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say that they were the first hardcore band that impressed you, like made a big impression on you as far as like, because you said, you know, yeah. they were more professional yeah. than most. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and they I had went, a certain, you know, mystique and a certain swagger to them, you know. Totally. I, I went yeah. to see GBH that day. Yeah. And uh, I knew the Cro-Mags by name because of that Phil Donahue right, show. Right. Yeah. Right, so, so um, the well-known show. Where so Phil Donahue guys, was, yeah. a, was a you, was a talk show. Yeah. That that was on in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, um, and they had an episode in the eighties talking about like New York, hardcore New York hardcore. Some number. guy had written for the the New York magazine or something, right? Or something. Yeah. yeah, and interviewed Isn't a lot of people. Isn't it crazy to think that it, it, it you know and see back got then, to TV then then in that time period like yeah. crazy yeah yeah and so so I didn't know what they sounded like but I remember you know like Harley and John being really kind of strong presence during that interview and right. you know Harley even gave a shout out for his band like right. af after Phil Downey handed the mic to <laughs> of him of course he did and then <laughs> and then uh, he pulled it away and then Harley said oh wait wait one second tapped his shoulder he said by the way I play bass for a band called the Cro-Mags and you know and everyone started laughing and, <laughs> oh, so okay boy. so now I know who the Cro-Mags yeah, are yeah, yeah. but I don't know what they sound like right 
and uh, I walked in, and they were already like two songs into their set because right. uh, that's that show was probably sold out. And they used to have, I remember, for some reason, the opening band that's would go on impressive. before they let people walk, before everyone was actually fully into the club. Right. And yeah, I walked in, and these dudes just they looked larger than life. I mean, they just no band for me at that point had made just a real big impression on and i think hardcore live in general makes a different kind of impression than other things you see you it know? does I but mean, but, but like everything up to that had been a little bit more just kind of like skinny sweaty guys like kind of just thrashing around you yeah, know it was yeah, more yeah. like what was the chromag lineup when you saw them it was the the full age of coral lineup right. it was john harley doug mackie mackie yeah. and, and paris wow yeah Doug was in on Age of Quarrel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't on the demo, maybe. Uh-uh. Doug, Doug Holland was on, was on Age of Quarrel, guaranteed. No, he wasn't. Guaranteed. No, guaranteed. he was How are you in the... Oh, you're right. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I remember the picture now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guaranteed. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. And he was a guy... Um, <laughs> well, so then we found out that, that you know, well, I, well, I already knew they're from New York, right. but now we're starting to kind of put things together. Now you know? New York like, is, is, has... It's like you got to Now you're front. curious about You got New this York. other band, the yeah. Cro-Mags, right? Yeah. And uh, believe it or not, a band shortly after that that came through that were also uh, New York, rapper in New York was uh, Underdog. Yeah, yeah. Like early, early. I can't remember who they were opening for. Yeah. But, uh yeah. Yeah, we're underdog from New York. You know, it's like real, like, yeah. it was like, oh, shit, that's cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, okay, so how did I meet them? Just from meeting, I mean, we knew, you know, Chip, my You got to remind people that the scenes were smaller than that's right. two. That's right. Well, they're still pretty small. Yo, nowadays. people were writing letters back but then. But, yeah, bro. people would, would write Chip, each other. Yeah, Chip yeah. would, because would, Chip always was the mouth, you know what I mean? Right. He's always been a salesman. Right. Uh, and he was always, you know, he wanted to take the band as far as it could be, as far as it could go. And that's right. not to say we thought we we're going to be famous, but he's like, well, what the fuck? Like when we started in, in Minnesota, he's like, we should go play at a club. Right. We go see these other bands play at First Avenue. Why can't we go play there? Right. And, you know, he figured out who to get in touch with and he got us he made to play the shows. And then from there, it was like every show that came through that we liked, he made sure that he got us on. Right. And we'd rub elbows with, you know, I mean, Youth of Today, you know, Cro-Mags. Um, who else would have been coming through at that time? Um, suicidal Tendencies. Everybody but AF. You know, everybody <laughs> but AF, yeah. But then, so when we, so then he set up a tour for us. Right. And we were playing CBs uh-huh. uh, that's, that summer in 88. That, that, right, right, right. Um, and, uh, but on that same tour, we wound up. You must have been psyched. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. On that same tour, we wound up playing through Chicago before getting out to New York, and uh, AF played. Yeah. Uh, and I think you were at that show. Was I? Yeah. It, yeah. Was, uh, it was Agnostic Front, Ludacrist, and um, it was on the Liberty and Justice tour. Oh, yeah. It's a good chance. And, and I remember- I, I remember was the, hanging around with them on that tour a bunch, so yeah, yeah. The, the, first, the first thing, Roger came out on stage, and you know, this- this song goes out to all the anti-racist skins out there in the audience. The bones bet- were out. Between Chicago and Minneapolis, there were a lot. I mean, it, was, it was that summer was skinhead. Yeah, I mean everybody was a skinhead. Yeah, that's just yeah. what it was. And that's a good thing to touch on too, because a lot of people don't realize that in the Midwest there were a lot of anti-racist. Uh, a lot. Yeah. I mean, obviously there were the other. There was always the other side there, but politically speaking, but there was a lot of anti-racist uh, cliques. Sharps and yeah. Baldies and the, the Minneapolis yeah, yeah. Baldies made Minneapolis made Baldies, a lot yeah. of noise, man. absolutely. And they they handled a lot of business. I remember those guys. We yeah. we had some real nasty motherfuckers in St. Paul on yeah. that white power tip, and the Baldies. I mean, they went toe to toe. They went toe to toe, and and they yeah. So um, yeah, so bumped it. Talked to AF a little bit of that show, <laughs> right? And the other connection too, I forget is is. There was a punk band in Minneapolis that we used to play with. Like, we were the Skins and they were the Punks, right? right. It was like, you know, Punk Skin Unity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they were called Misery. Okay, and they were yeah. basically like our nausea. You know what I mean? Right, right. Oh. I mean, they, they, they basically, they, they Boy, basically yeah, modeled Roy. themselves. Boy, favorite band. They modeled themselves as Roy. nausea. And Al <laughs> wind up joining nausea. Right. Okay. And living in the house in Staten Island. Which oh, Al, wow, okay. Uh, I remember him. 
Al was the singer for for Misery, yeah. who wound up being the replacement for was it Neil? Neil, Neil. right? Oh, Neil, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and even and even before that, we wound up playing a benefit show for your brother, right? Uh, at the Anthrax, it was us. It was blind blind approach, slap shot. Instead, maybe. Wow. Um, and we stayed at the house in Staten Island. Amy put us up. Nice. Because she knew she knew misery and she knew you know we so there were, was a connection there i mean there was a connection. connection it was yeah. back then you could yeah. those connections people worked, would do that man. yeah those yeah. connections meant something yeah so you know i mean your brother was away we were obviously more than happy to play the show sure and uh on top of it amy put us up and we right. stayed with her for like three days wow in Staten island you stayed at the house you know, tripping out that it, and this, the street. Is, this is yeah, roger's house, house and yeah. you know um so yeah, and then probably pretty impressed that he had a house. <laughs> right? Oh shit, well, he's in a house. <laughs> uh, I remember him talking at that yeah. Chicago show about yeah, you know, you guys can all come out. You know, I got a house in Staten Island now. You know, I got a swimming pool. I got this. Like he was talking about having inviting his, the whole yeah. all, the, all of yeah, Chicago, yeah, yeah. all the yeah. these everybody in yeah. <laughs> the whole awkward scene. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh and, and when we played CBs, your brother was there. Okay. Because uh, we opened. So this was Nausea. later. So this was later on. You no, come to this, or this is right before Roger went away. Okay, this is how I learned he was going away. Right. Um, that first tour that Blind Approach had in '88, going out to Seabees. Right. We were opening for Nausea. Was I think Jimmy Williams? Didn't Jimmy Williams play yeah, drums for Nausea? Yeah, he did for yep. a moment. Yeah. He was so he was on drums, and uh, but we're up on stage playing, and Roger was in the crowd just watching us the entire time, and he walked up to us. Huh. Introduced himself, nice. and we just started, you know, talking. And I mean, that made a big impression on me, right? Because it's like, not only did, you know, I mean, and he knew we're fans. I mean, that's just there was just no other way to put it, right? But he, you know, he didn't have to come talk to us, right? And I don't think he was doing it to kiss anybody's ass or like, you know, make people think this or that about him, right? He was genuinely interested and thought the band was okay. Yeah, he he was and impressed. Just and was wanted like, hey, to come hey, say, "Hey, yeah. man, I, I checked it out and it was cool." And and then we got to talking a little bit more, and then he mentioned how he was probably going to have to go away for a minute. Right? Oh man. So after all that, after he goes away, where was he going? That, oh, oh, that vacation uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That vacation upstate New York. <laughs> Club Med. Yeah. Yeah. Club Med. <laughs> uh, yeah. So eventually when, when that vacation ended, <laughs> by that time I was going to school in Boston. Right. And Al was still living in Staten Island. And Roger was looking to get the band starting up again. And Steve Martin had quit. So you were in Boston. I was in Boston. So, this, so you started school... Yeah. You start. You went yeah. from from uh, your school schooling wise. Give us a little background in there to get to, you know. So you so you decided to Berkeley go to the Berkeley, music. Berkeley College of Music yeah. in Boston. So yeah. that's where you land. Yep. That, yeah. I mean, all I did for most of my teenage years was play guitar. I mean, yeah. it's that that's, was your passion. That was everything. I could kill eight hours in a day yeah. just sitting in my basement yeah. and just playing along the records and just you know. See kids. You want to play like Matt Henderson one someday? I play mean, your guitars a hundred hours a day. You no, know, I, uh, I just, I, it wasn't like oh, oh it shows. I, it, it wasn't like oh, I gotta be, you know, I gotta, I just love doing it, right? And I, I, luckily somehow, things just came together for me where I felt like I, you know, I, I could tell this sounds pretty good. I think I'm, you know. And how did that happen? The Berkeley thing? How did? Well, so you, I, that's just it. How did I had you get it. into a school like that because it's a pretty prestigious. You know, school, the thing is with that school. If you can pay the tuition, they're going to get you for man. Yeah. They really Money are. talks. Yeah. Wow. And, I, you know, uh, I could never recommend that school, in all honesty. Oh. It's just, if you want to be a, a professional point. musician or, you or you know, in the recording field, yep. don't go to a four-year college. Yeah. You don't need it. You know, get just anything. If you're going to go to school, if you're going to spend the money on tuition and get a degree, yeah. get in something that can really, like put you in some type of career path that can make you a little bit of money right you know right. if you want to be a musician you don't I mean no one's gonna like I mean did my fucking yeah they're not gonna place you in a band right exactly yeah. you know what You know what or the, you're gonna be you graduated you're one of the best guitarists here you go to Metallica next you know when you yeah, graduate yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, the fuck the, there, there's a there, there is a career placement um, you know program right in and at, studios Berkeley, engineering and well 
Berkeley had a career placement program, and uh, they had counselors there. And one of the things they recommend for the performing musicians is, as soon as you're done with school, uh, join a cruise ship band. Oh boy! Yeah, that was their advice. That, to you? that was like that was the good way to get your foot in the door. You're playing live in front of people, and and that's all they way. had for you. That's about it. That was yeah. the extent of them yeah. placing you somewhere, or or, <laughs> or go back, AF. or teach, yeah. <laughs> or teach at Berkeley. Oh boy! And then it became real. So then, it's so kind on the performing of, side of things, you're going to be. It's 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 a no. It's it's it, it's, it doesn't, yeah. it's, it doesn't doesn't pay. Nah, it just doesn't make sense. So when Roger, when Roger wanted to get the band back together, and Al's living at the house, they need a guitar player. Al's like, "Hey, that's your guy. That kid Matt, who was in that band Blind Approach from the Twin Cities, he's in Boston right now. You should give him a call. You know, he might be ready to do it for you." And um. Yeah, I was working at a video store, yeah. and my girlfriend at the time called me up and said, uh, uh, Roger from Agnostic Front just called you. He wants you to join the band and go to Europe. And, 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 and remind kids, this is like he leaves a me- he calls your house on a regular line, phone line, right? This yeah, is yeah, like yeah. not on a cell phone, right. not on your iPhone. Right. Like, yeah, go, you know. <laughs> and, and at first I was like, I'm thinking uh, it could be like Chip or some of the fellas like yeah. trying to keep pranking you. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm like, but then she gave me the number and I knew it was a New York number. 718. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And yeah, I called him and sure enough, it was him and we wow. talked and I started going down there every weekend and. And there you go. Yeah. Went to Europe. That was a rough tour, bro. <laughs> Yeah, that, that first, first one for you guys. Tour. What year was that? I Nin- wish I'd remember 90. that. 90. 1990. Oh my God, 90. Yeah. And when did we go with Madball? It was 92? Uh, that time no. when Madball opened oh, up for Yeah, for December AF. of 92. Yeah, I always thought it was 92. People say 93 to me. I'm like, it wasn't 93. It was December It was before 93. Because 93, he went to, we went to South America with Hoya. You did? Yeah, we did. What do you mean you did? Mark we did. <laughs> what do you oh, mean you it, was, did? it was before set it off. Before set it, it was off. before. It was Roger on bass, too. everybody rocking the flannels. Remember yeah, that shit? Yeah. And people were like, it's 93. I'm like, no, it's before 93. Because right. Hoya was in the band in 93. You know why? Because uh, January, or no, uh, the last AF show was yeah. just at Christmas time at CB's in December. Right. right. Remember the, the last Yeah, AF yeah, yeah. Show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's true. Though. That. The band broke up. No, for it real. did for years. Yeah, people forget that too. I've, you're right for years, for many years. Yep, <laughs> you know, like four years or some shit. Which is one of the reasons I never felt like I always thought it was. It wasn't a gimmick by any stretch. I mean, we we waved that flag. Yeah, because there was. You mean Madball? Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a void to fill, and we had you exactly. and Willie yeah. and like. Half AF, yep. Vinny at the time. Yep. So we did have to. I'm my brother, you know, that's my brother. Yep. And like, well, who's going to fill the void of AF? And then, yep. you know, we were like, well, that's a pretty big, some pretty big shoes to fill. So yep. we kind of had to bring it in our own kind of crazy way. But so, so AF, what was the first record you played on? One Voice. One Voice. Yeah. And that was it. And after that, it was Matt. Yeah, we yeah. recorded that last CB, that last yeah. show at CB's, and that was, that got released, but I mean, yeah. that was just a, did they? Did you write a lot of that stuff? And and how was it going? In since you you're playing for them for the first time, because I know what it is to play with dudes they used to listen to. Yeah, that's got to be something. How was it? That, were were you? Um, did you bring a lot to the table? Did they ask you to bring riffs, or they just wanted you to play? Did somebody write the riffs? How did it work out? So Roger got us a rehearsal studio in Staten Island. Willie was living at the house. At Willie that was time. at the house. So yeah. I, I basically lived there too. It was me and Willie and Roger lived in the house. Yeah. And Craig, Craig used to come in to Staten Island, and we'd yeah he'd come and stay there for days at a time. Yeah. And shit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I did wind up writing a lot. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, writing riffs was something I felt like I'd kind of you know been able to get good at. Um, yeah. But I learned a lot, Craig. Really, you know, Willie played you like you guys had that was a heavy my, my AF. That was like a real necessary youthful injection for AF, man, to have that squad. I mean, sure, you, yeah, Craig and Willie, yeah. you guys were beasts. You know, you know, on, was my on, biggest on all influence. Your instruments, you my know, biggest like, influence at that time, I had I just stumbled across it and I stumbled across it late in the game, but uh, still early enough was uh, Killing Time, Brightside. Oh, 
one of the best hardcore albums ever. Like to me, I was just like, how did I, you know, another band that didn't tour really outside of like the Northeast, so they never made it to my neck of the woods. Right. And I just, I'd never realized they were even a band. Right. And somehow, one of my boys, I remember, who came to visit me in Boston a while back, left his tape behind, was, you know, Brightside cassette. And uh, I was like, this shit's fucking badass. Yeah. And they was they were a little more complex musically, you know what I mean? A little more yeah. intricate. Yeah. Um and not to say that that's what I always wanted to do, but I was like that's cool. It just kind of opened the, it opened the doors a little bit more. It right. seemed like. And so when we started writing for One Voice, a lot of that was in my head. Right. Um right. A lot of that. So, so, so that Brightside record was big, real influential at that mo- at that yeah, point in time in your sure. life. And Willie played like a professional drummer. Like yeah. that was the first time I ever played with a drummer that played like good old Dick Shepler. Good old Dick Shepler. <laughs> Let me. Crazy uh, trade. We're but just with him, but you know who 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 really brought the most to the table as far as like shaping the record was Craig. Really? Yeah. Wow. Rounding out like his there. head. <laughs> Rounding out his. A really because you know what he was. He's a really analytical guy. So when you're writing a song, and he had some shit under his belt, he had been with a bunch of bands well, by just, that point. And yeah, no, he's he's yeah, a very he's, uh, he's, see more seasoned than both musician. than probably you guys at yes. that point. He'd recorded at Normandy already, right? Which you know, in those days, you know, you're recording the tape. Yeah, there is no Pro Tools. You can't yeah. do the take and then say, well. It was cool, except for you know we had this, this problem piece. here. Let me cut and do some paste, and I'll I'll take care yeah, of it. Keep that side, that yeah. part of it, and I'll yeah. No, you had the your performance had to be spot on because you're going to tape, and that's yeah. really how it's got to get there. Yeah. So, um, y- you know, he just had that that he had more pro music experience than me for and sure, all you guys yeah. yeah and so but he's also really analytical like we'd sit there and write something he'd he always chewed on his fingers remember that yeah <laughs> he'd sit there and and you'd watch him and you'd wait but then he'd say something and he'd be like he's like okay that part there has got to change I'm like why he's like because it you don't hear that and like he'd make some feel and he'd always have those crazy like terms yeah. like it's, it's too much celery you don't you don't hear the celery in that we need <laughs> some more things never change we need, we need more forehead he always had the good <laughs> forehead <laughs> Uh, oh, I love it. But you know, and so I, I'd have to credit him for really teaching me how to really get into the trenches when you try to put a song together. Right, makes a difference. Yeah. Oh yeah. And th- and that was a big record. A lot of people, you know, love that record. Oh, yeah. Also for the production <laughs> of the record. But when it came out, everyone hated it. Oh yeah. Well, that's the, that's I, the funny thing. The, it wasn't. It wasn't the younger the, most the, beloved the younger it wasn't like, the younger yeah. cats were cool with it. Like, cause uh, it was uh, it was more fresh than what the other stuff was, right? Yeah. To them, right. and it, more groove, it, yeah, little, yeah, yeah. But the older people were like, Fuck "This doesn't sound like, pain, yeah, yeah." I want to hear victim in pain. I mean, we were all hanging out together. At, we were we were hanging out together at that time. But I thought the campaign was big for that record because he got out of jail. Roger got out of jail. It was. And then, you know, all that, the record was dope, the big production, the big produce. I mean, for hardcore, the big production, producer name, and there was flyers everywhere. I think you're right, though. There was was a big campaign. And one, and a big big tour, I wanted to bring up the tour that you guys did that. It's a, oh, big, yeah. it's a big tour that even, you know, in the metal world, people, you know, people forget this. There was a big tour that you guys did with uh, Obituary, yep. Cannibal Corpse, yep. Malevolent Creation, yep. Agnostic Front. Yep. So that must have been crazy because that was at a time where, I mean. Obituary was, was big. That was Obituary when they were popping, brand new, and it was um, Roadrunner had that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah popping yeah. off. How, what, what was up with that tour? That was amazing. That was at the height of AF AF's one voice campaign right there. That was like that it was, was and we we got more love on that tour than yeah. than any other tour that I was a part were of. Open to you guys, yep. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, um, there was a definite you know uh, worlds colliding. Well, maybe AF that had enough with, elements. I mean, you had all the cars for alarm stuff, and uh, you know yeah. what I mean. And then yeah. and one voice would appeal to metal kids. You yep. know what I'm saying? So it's Agnostic like, Front's one of those bands yeah. that that. Everybody knows, or at least they think they know. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, whether or not they're actually fans or not, right? You know, but it was a it was a name that people associated heavy music with, right? And uh, rest in peace to Frank from Obituary. Yeah, I know. We just had some bad news that he passed, but he was a good dude, a great bass player, and he always had a lot of love 
for the New York hardcore scene. Man, yep. He was, he was the biggest you know, so um, camp, mad love to his family and everything. But um, <laughs> oh, and shout out to Obituary. We're going to be actually seeing them soon. We're playing, we're playing with them. Um, January 30th. January 30th, 2016 in, in um, Tampa. So we get to see them and hang out. But um, yeah, the tour, the Great tour. Guys. What else? Great guys. Uh, you Frank. remember? Yeah, I remember. Because Freddy was, on, was that, on that tour. On the tour with us. I was a roadie. Frank, Frank every night would we come out and play bass for uh, do uh, United Blood. <laughs> He'd come out and play that. Yeah. And uh, those guys would put us, I mean, they'd share their bus with us because we were in a van. They offered it. And we'd have some long Certain tours. Certain people took liberties. Long trips. Yeah. <laughs> we won't mention those people. But they did. They said, look, we got extra bunks. Like, they used to get mad at us. Like, I remember one time, and Roger, Roger didn't yeah. want it. And I understood why. Yeah. You know, he didn't want us to come, come across like being freeloaders or, you know, right. taking advantage right. of... You Not know, to mention he's sick and he wanted everyone to suffer. Well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> I can say that. You don't there have to say that. There was that. that yeah. about my brother. But, uh, you know, and, and then we show up the next day at the club. He's like, and John, the singer, would be like, you guys are dicks. What, what's the matter with you? <laughs> we got these open bunks. Just yeah. sleep in it, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So. Um, did you ever go in there? Because I thought none of us ever I did. did. I did once okay. or twice. But Three times, five times. <laughs> no, but not a lot. No, 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 Because no, 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 no. I can remember being in those van rides, and it was all of us, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Except yeah. certain people. Well, there was, because, you know, yeah. you, you didn't want to leave the rest of the fellas behind. Right. And, like, just... Yeah, you stick with your team, for better or worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yo, Obituary brought it, bro. Yeah. That was another band, to me, that, like, opened my eyes and said, Damn. Because they were heavy. Yeah. And they had that groove. I mean, Don Tardy on drums, a killing beast. it every night. Yeah. And they used to, I remember, like, we would play, like, Denver, let's say. And when we were on stage, the skinheads were just destroying the place. I mean, just trying to fight the metalheads and basically just beating people up the entire time. How crazy time. that that was still happening. Yeah. I mean, I guess it is the early 90s. Yeah. It, was, also, it was 92, right? Yeah, 92. it was also 100 years ago. Think about how many years ago. Well, yeah. 90, you know, yeah. 92 yeah, yeah, was a long yeah, time yeah. ago yeah. now, but then you yeah. were thinking... <clears throat> I, I got know. thrown out of the <laughs> Matt, he didn't even fucking, it didn't matter what he said. <laughs> two plus two, uh, whatever, <laughs> seven. Right, hey, hey. Two plus two, jello. <laughs> oh. But by the time obituary would go on, yeah. everyone's too busy dancing. Right. There was no, there was no beef. Like, you just, they brought that groove. That, and that was the, that was one of the, there was two metal bands. Too, to have yeah. It. There was two metal bands that, it didn't matter if you were a skinhead or a metalhead. And that yep. was Slayer and Obituary. Yep. Whenever and one more Celtic Frost. Whenever they played, for some reason, it didn't matter. Celtic Frost. I mean, there would have been. I mean, I yo, think they'll admit it. Obituary. If it exactly. Wasn't for yo, and Frost. shout out to Celtic Frost. We have a lot of history with them. There's actually you know the funny you know the, the no besides that. It's years, I, man. I'll give you a uh, well anyway. Um, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Damn, that's a long time. Well, I got a Celtic Frost story we're going to do it on another time, but it's a good one. But um, those were the bands that all the skins would come out to. Yeah. And um, they always had that thing. So it was a lot of classic shows, especially the one in New York. There was actually a riot in New York that um, was pretty I fun. I remember the, yeah. It was the one voice. It was the one was voice. That that was that obituary? Yeah, yeah, I think it was right. that. I remember. I don't remember. The, the, at the Palladium, there was a riot, and there was all these dudes doing crazy stuff and but that was an AF show that was an AF show oh yeah, I thought was, it was on that tour it wasn't on that it no uh -uh. where did AF did AF play did New, did New York happen on that tour I feel like it yeah, did yeah it did where uh, I think the Ritz yeah I think so fuck I don't remember the New York show I remember yeah, like all, a bunch of so. other shows but I don't remember New York I, think I remember it was the Ritz. Detroit yeah. I remember oh, um, the Medi Milwaukee Metal Fest yeah I remember like do you remember that story do you remember Hang with the Detroit guys in Milwaukee. Huh. You don't the, remember the that? Metal Fest. Yeah, yeah. And afterwards, the tour's over. I mean, the yeah. show's over. Yeah. And Ronnie. Oh. And Ronnie. a couple Rest other in guys. Peace, Ron. Man, one, go one back of our to homies. our hotel. Cold, cold as life. Roger was off the tour at that point. Yeah. Roger was back. Well, that's why I said I said that because it's like that was. Remember, they're like, "Oh, you're gonna have to sing now." And I'm like, yeah. "What?" Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. I'm cool with going up and doing one one little song or something. Yep. But yep. and then my first show is Detroit. He, he left at know, the Metal Fest. That uh, he left, even though you, you were obviously Madball before that. That that was a pretty big. That was my training ground. Yeah, it was your training ground. You had to sing the entire set for probably two weeks or at least a week, right? More than that, yeah. And they were big shows. More than a week. It was probably two weeks. Big shows. Why? Why was he? Why did he have to sing? Where was Roger? 
<laughs> oh my god. Was there something Roger had some sort of fucking something happen. He got sick and he had to go take address I, I, it. I wonder what. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious. Everyone ask Roger next time you see him, why is it why is it that you had to leave that tour? <laughs> yeah. But you know, my brother, he's like he's not gonna cancel the tour for nothing in the world. So he was like, Well, it was a you big know the tour. songs. You know the songs. It was a yeah. big tour, it was an important tour. Yeah. So I jumped in. And the, what, one thing I wanted to know, so you're playing with AF. This is, was there a, uh, something physically said when um, the band was about to stop playing, when AF was about to break up? Was there like, did Roger say, oh, we're going to have a meeting or whatever? Was there a meeting or did you see it kind of happening little by little? And once you saw that, since, you know, I know you have family back home and you ain't originally from the East Coast. Were you thinking what, what was going to be your next move? Yeah, good, good that's question. that's a, yeah, that's a really, really good, good question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, I saw. Excuse me. That was a that was a not an easy or great time for hardcore because there was kind of that. That was probably the first cycle of the post hardcore, like you know, quick. I always thought that that's probably the worst period of hardcore. I think it was nineties, yeah. and I think people forget that. Like when we when Madball started, you know, yeah. not to get back on yeah. the Madball tip, but we started at the worst point of hardcore. Yep. Just because we were associated with AF didn't mean like we were going to come and play the Ritz in front of a thousand people. Actually, it was quite the opposite. Remember them shows we played yeah. in the beginning? Big opposite. 20, 20 yeah. people. Yeah. And people think like, oh, oh, they're AF's little yeah. brother, so yeah, they're going to just blow up. No, and I mean, no, no. I didn't think we were going to just blow up necessarily, no. but I, even you know, myself, I kind of thought, you know, yeah. all right, there's probably, you know, yeah. if there's any type of, if that name means anything to anybody, yeah. I would think that yeah. so would Madball. Right. <laughs> Oof. Was, uh, but we'll get into that. Get, so, get, yeah, so, so, so it was a combination of the fact that the scene was just not really, really there to support the band anymore. Right. And, uh... You know, there have been some weird business management decisions that kind of got a little, kind of took their toll on everybody. I think everybody was just kind of over it at that point. And, you know, Roger obviously made the call. He decided he was going to go down to Miami to uh, do the, uh, or that wasn't Miami, Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. For the Harley Davidson school, the mechanic. I thought it was 10 speeds. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a smart move because yeah. he had to have something to, you know, yeah. and, something and, under his belt. Yeah. You know? and, 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 you know, I wasn't, I couldn't, I could never work in New York. I had no connection for any type of job. Yeah. And any type of job I, I was going to try to get, if I had to go tour, I'm quitting that job. So I, I, did, I was having a hard time making money over there. Yeah. And the only other thing I could think of was to go back to school. Yeah. Which is what I did. So I went back to Boston. And then I remember, because we, Madball, I mean, we pl you were in the band. I was, I was in the By the time I went back to school, weren't you in the band? I don't know. I just... Well, well let's look at... Let, let, let's recap. That Europe tour that Madball did with AF was probably one of the last tours, right? That was on that string of last shows, last tours. Yeah, and, I, I didn't, and and Madball to me at that time wasn't Madball technically was a band; it was no. a side we, project. We had well, we had dropping many suckers. That was it, right? You know, and Hoya was already. We were all friends by that point. Hoya was already my friend, but by we because we played shows around New Demise. York after yeah. that tour, yeah. Right, we, yeah, it was it was up and it was up to the last CB show yeah. where we all played shows together. together yeah. yeah, because I remember my old band Demise actually played together. We yeah. played with AF Madball Demise. Yep. Yeah. we've played uh, the in Long Island That's and CBs exactly. or something yep. like. Yep. And um. But all right, but let me ask you this. All right, so you you know that's happening now. This is one thing I don't know. I just remember when you guys asked me if I wanted to fill in to jump on yeah but because, uh, remind people that roger was playing bass. yeah so the original mabo lineup was basically agnostic front but roger was playing on bass yeah. right so when roger decided to move away right what, what how did it come up to say hey let's let's fuck around and do a, a mad ball um uh, project again what what was it like that, yeah. why, what was the reason why I, that, that's that's what i'm having trouble remembering believe trouble it or not and, and 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 it was like the worst time in hardcore so it wasn't like it was like a great time to like start doing another band but i think i don't know i don't remember i yeah i, I was having fun with it i mean yeah. just remember my own experience sure because it, it was uh it was just a little tougher and meaner than 
than AF, you know, the one voice AF. Had a different you know little I mean? grit to it. Yeah, yeah it was, it was more stripped it. down, a little more, you know, um, raw and, and nasty. And uh, ugly. The breakdowns I thought were harder, you know. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, I think I think we were just it must have been we just going to play shows on the weekends. Right? right. Why not? Right. You know. Yeah, because I don't fucking remember that. Either. I just remember. I don't even remember and, why and, we did drop in many suckers. To be honest with you, I, oh, think I know Roger why we did had that. a whole book of, of lyrics and like we were like, he oh, did. let's do something. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. We Fuck. did that so we had a release for that tour. For that tour, right, right, yeah, because we didn't want to go over there empty-handed, so we did an EP. Yep, but I mean, because how did we get? How did we all of a sudden get with Roadrunner? No, well, that's I that's, just that's later. Yeah, like, but not much. I was, I, no, no, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, what I, what I remember is this. So, because I went back to school in '93, you told me, yo, I remember you oh, said you want to jump yeah. in. You told me, hey, you want to jump on? We're gonna do. I remember you said, oh, we're gonna do a couple weekends. The demise was ending. Right? Yep. Yeah, my my my, my old. Like, oh, my old band was breaking up. It was like we were already, you know, it wasn't. You know, we probably played 13 shows in our existence anyway. But uh, I was getting done with that, and then I remember you guys asking me to fill in because we were already hanging out. But I remember it was uh, you guys told me, um, "No, a couple weekend shows, yo, maybe we do like a week tour or That's something." How it started. And then um, you had you had a wh- why I thought it was already kind of planned out because you had like a week, a couple weekends like up in the northeast. You remember Boston, Maine? Yeah, you had like real weekends. I never did that like that. Who was booking for it? Who was booking us I then? It had to have been somebody because we. I did. I wasn't setting that up. I couldn't tell you. No, you weren't. I mean, but I. I want to know the. I can't I, remember. I, it's good that you bring up how that we end. All right, so. We start jamming. Yeah. But about now you brought up getting signed to Roadrunner because I remember. It wasn't Tim, was it? It might have been Tim Bor. I think it, Tim I think Moore. it probably Which was. Really, enough, that he's our, he's our booking agent now. You know, it couldn't be Tim Bora back then. It, it could have been because he worked with us early, yeah. early on, and then we bounced around Finberg, a couple of different people, you know. But Tim did some early stuff. It might have been Tim, man. Who knows? It might have been. Before he worked with anybody else, yeah, which is funny because full circle, you know, here here he is, he's our you know U.S. guy for right, forever now. Because we played we played a fair amount of shows before set it off. Yeah, like those some weekends back America. when I was living with Rick. Yeah, weekends and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we'd play you know like the the toxic narcotic days. Remember? Yeah, the bruisers, bruisers a lot bruisers. of those kind of shows. Yep. That's some fun show. We really cut our teeth doing that, like those Northeast, like Boston yeah. and Maine yeah. and New York, Rhode Jersey, Island. Connecticut. Rhode Island used to be New good York shows. Sometimes, man. Right? Babyhead was a good. Babyhead was amazing. Guaranteed. When did New York start kicking up again? Because that was like what ninety five until six? Wetlands, right? Yeah. Wet, Coney yeah. Island and Wetlands. Yeah. Which is ninety five and up. Well, no, because we we did ninety four. Yeah. We I think we were playing Wetlands before Set It Off got, came out. Guaranteed we were. Remember when we played NYU? Yeah, that was, <laughs> it was like fucking five people. Yeah, and then my yeah. friend Norm. No, yeah, but no. It. NYU was my first show with the band, and I got fucking hit in the head with the <laughs> microphone. This yep. fucking nigga Freddy was fucking spinning the microphone, and it ricocheted off my head. <laughs> And we were, we were playing a club that fit like 1,300 people, uh, and there was probably 13 people there. I was at 25, right? I yeah, I was like, 25 to life. There was probably somebody else. And I just remember somebody backstage. Because I got no redeeming social I remember body, Fred maybe. Mess pissing in a bottle, and, and we yeah. watching some guy who kept coming in asking for beer. Yep. And we gave him the bottle, and I just remember the guy drinking, and he was, that tastes a little weird, but he downed yep. the whole thing. Yep. But, um... That's what I'm saying. What, uh, does anybody here right now remember how did uh, us getting signed to Roadrunner like come up? I have I have an, I have a story in my head that I've been rocking well, with for years, but I don't even know if I made it up in my head. I know for and me we, it was a, it was a rough decision to agree to because I'm like besides that, but coming up to it, school, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm like I, I'm like tough. you know I really like the band, yeah. Obviously, I mean, this, you had fun doing it. This when is what you, I when we did it in Europe. You guys always had fun. You guys always looked forward to but, doing the map. But you know, not to not to boil things down to money because it's really not the thing that is all important to me. But if you don't got money, yeah, life can be pretty right? fucking miserable. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I just I could never figure out a way to earn a living. And I'm like, yeah. well, 
I did it once, did it twice, and I'm like, now I'm back in school. Maybe I should just be sticking with school. And you know, yeah, that, you know, hey, playing music is great, but let me, let me try to get some school finished here. Yep. Um, but yeah, we we had that we had that shitty fucking demo tape. Yeah, I can't remember what the song was, but we it never it was never a real song. Yeah, we never actually right. Yeah, it was never never dropped it. No, thank God. Yo, shout out to Howie because you know um Howie always loved the band and he really loved us because that demo was horrible. That shit sucked. Yeah, but um, I just remember um when it came up, it was like we were basically getting offered the biggest metal label at the time to sure. want to do our record yeah and i remember saying like fuck it like why not what the fucking worst thing that could happen like you know right we so do a record a demo? yeah yeah we gave him a we gave him a tape that we just recorded off of boombox <laughs> well, i know and, how he no, got it, well with R- willie on we're drums. gonna talk to howie one of these yeah, too because we got something lined I, up for howie yeah. Yeah. but i will you say know, howie Ames for whatever reason always who, who believed was, in who was agnostic fronts a and from, from, from and now, now, I don't know if you guys remember different but this is how I remember it and remember this might be all bullshit I'm not like bullshitting on purpose I could have sworn that we were trying to go talk to the label that you guys were on before wreckage and us running into Howie and, and we're like hey what's up bye, bye, bye. That, that makes sense listen hold on yeah. hold on exactly right. and right. I remember and I could be wrong but I remember running into Howie and then oh what's up what's up yo we're gonna go talk to wreckage why oh cause we're doing the mad ball he's like you're doing the mad ball and he told us call me I'm, work- I'm with Roadrunner yeah and that's the fact. I've been telling that people that for years. That it could be sound, bullshit. Sound, it does sound like it's a, a, a possibility. That that makes sense to me. But but, but I remember because you like guys kind of had it set up. Like I, you didn't have it set up, but like it was almost like the deal. You guys had kind of been. You knew more about it than I did. Right. And then eventually, I'm in I'm in Boston, and it's like we're talking on the phone. I can't remember exactly how the conversation went, but I was like. I had to make the decision if I'm going to agree and we're going to sign and we're going to, you know, once Commit you sign, it. you got a tour and blah, blah, blah. I mean, why the fuck else are you doing it? Right. Right. Yeah. Especially in those days, no label is going to be like, yeah, because yeah. they No, you, know, you had to commit to a certain amount of touring. Even though we didn't get a lot of money in our budget, it was yeah. still thou- tens yeah, of thousands yeah, of dollars yeah, or something. Yeah. I mean, it was. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Back you know? then. It's more than now. I mean, it's all surprising. Look. Yeah. Oh, my that God. I mean, right. No, it's terrible. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how you had to yeah. do it. That's how you had yeah. to make a, a and that's what that you would spend on the record. Yeah. Yeah. You would spend it all. Now you can yeah, spend we went way less. in our pockets. No. Yeah, it was about a thousand dollars a day yeah. to be in a studio, yeah. and 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 we were now there that, for that a minimum include, two weeks at a time. Include some whack ass yeah. lodging, but it was yeah, lodging. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it was haunted yeah, houses with yeah. Jamie Locke. Yeah, but um, yeah. Sometimes it was good enough. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, I guess the rooms weren't. They were nice. They were nice locations. Let's say that some of them. Right. The mansion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Remember yeah. with homie fucking uh, uh, Dave cowboy. Brown. Dave Brown did uh, a space cowboy. Uh, Maurice. Maurice. Yeah, but not Maurice. Um, Michael, Johnson. Jimmy. Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. Yeah, Johnson crew. Shout out to Michael Johnson. <laughs> and, uh, Good guy. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. So no, we got the, it was. Well, whatever. We're gonna talk to Howie about that one. We gotta figure. Yeah, out. we gotta figure out how that happened. That, so, so, what, so let's go back since we're talking to Maddie. This is this is Maddie's interview. What? So, what did you? Th- what was going through your head at that point? Because you must have been over it, and like you're in school. Like, what, I, what's what's your? What are you thinking now? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is a this bad might idea. not be the right thing to do, <laughs> but it, it was obviously just. I mean, it's in my blood. It's you just, felt it's you just, felt something. I felt enough, you know, yeah. and I I really enjoyed the band at that time. And looking back on it now. I don't know what that's saying exactly because we didn't we didn't really hit our stride until we started sitting down and really writing for Set It Off. Yeah, and I remember. Yeah, we didn't even know. What, no we didn't idea. even know who we were. We didn't know what direction. We were like somewhat, and, but not and, really. And not like I, I I had any like reason to to think otherwise, but I just didn't know what like Hoya was going to be able to bring to the table musically, right. right? And I'm like, fuck, man. I you know I just hope. I knew I didn't want it to be all me, right? And and I'm like hoping that you know Hoya's you can gonna collaborate. Some, you can collaborate with people, yeah. Right? And there you I go. Was, and the fucking riff master. I was I was more, <laughs> I was worried about at the time. The I album. remember you holding back a little bit. Yeah, I was kind of like, "What the fuck am I tell these dudes? Yo, I got this fucking riff. You want to check it out?" I was like, well, "Yo, I just I was more worried about pedigree and all that." So you, yeah, it was. I grew up with the band, and then I'm like. 
I was more worried about being able to keep up playing wise. You know, I was like, because they were all regular, real players. And I'm like, man, you know, these guys are taking that shit serious. Like, oh, I'm hanging out. Like, I don't know what this is all about. But um, I remember um, I wasn't sure about the riffs because I was like, um, that's why the first song I wrote was, was an AF bite. Yep. It was a, it was a one voice bite because I said, fuck, what I'm going to do? I said, I'm going to bite their own song. Yep. Because you guys asked me. I remember, you guys, you guys got any riffs? And I sat there and I'm like. Cause I was playing already. That's right. More. We had we play, uh this time or uh, this time. It's time. It's time. Exactly. That was the first song I wrote. And and we that played was, that for a while before set it off. Yeah, and that was because was I was like, the first, one you wrote? Yeah. Was the first one I wrote was "It's Time" and then "Set It Off." "Set It Off" was I remember when you wrote "Set It Off." That's when I knew we had something a little different. But but that was the thing was um what were you um when we started to write for that record? What was your plan on what you wanted to do for that record? Mm. We knew it had to be different than AF, right? Because that'd be corny cool yeah. to just have some sort of copy to, band. To me, we we already were like, I mean, we're just, already under just the- to keep keep. You know, I I, I got I got to be honest. One of the bands that was had made a big impression around that time, and were you know kind of setting the standard for heaviness and groove and and dance breakdown parts was Biohazard. Yeah, I mean, whether or not you you liked the band at minimum you were forced to say to realize that damn they got something they're bringing something they're bringing something and you know here's what people are really responding to right you know what i mean that that because yeah, biohazard so, actually that was groove popping and off those breakdowns right you know i mean if your music ain't having it i'm not saying every band's got to have that but yeah. yeah you know what i mean so i knew i wanted it to have those groove. components i knew yeah. i wanted to have groove um, but, and we're and we're and we're Spanish and we're Latin, so naturally, yeah, I did. you know, I mean, and th- that's the thing to me too. It wasn't New York. I mean, hip hop. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? We we're big hip hop heads always. But, but even in the late eighties, I mean, yeah. you know, New York. I mean, yeah. Like, look at when I first met Agnostic uh, Chromags. Yeah. These motherfuckers, yo, that nigga, this, that nigga. Th-, I mean, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm like. I wasn't offended, yeah. but I was just like, yeah. they, you know, these guys are urban. like, yeah, exactly, as yeah. as urban to the extreme, you know what yeah. I mean? And Minneapolis wasn't, we were urban, but that was like, you could, you know, there was that yeah. whole extra level of yeah. street, street slang, and swagger, swag, yeah. and, you know, I mean, we already knew who, uh, uh, I mean, all the old hip hop coming out of New York, but even uh, eventually like... Uh, my philosophy, KRS, and uh, they had uh, on record. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like you just, it was, always in it was a street was thing. It was, it was like if you're if you're at street level in New York and hardcore happens to be your shit, you're in the street though, and so you're dealing with hip hop. And hip hop was just, I mean, that's New York culture, man. Yeah. So it made sense to blend that music and that groove, but have that kind of mean. And we were, and Hoy and I were obviously yeah. big into that. We were mean so that, in those days. That, we were going to hip hop clubs and doing, you know, and then at the same time going to hardcore shows. You know, it was like we were big into that culture. L- let me let me ask you this: What was the biggest difference with writing songs from Agnostic Front and then with Madball? Yeah, good question. Well, um, I felt I felt more confident. That writing with Madball because I'd gone through the Agnostic Front One Voice boot camp um, with all the guys, and I, I uh, you know, I, I just, that was your I, training ground, so you came into it with a little more savvy. Yeah, I felt confident in kind of like being able to, you know, I wasn't necessarily thinking I had to, but if no one else was going to be yeah. able to, at least I felt like I'd be able to help steer it along and, and wind up with a good, re- you know, end result. Sure. Um, that we wouldn't all just be fucking looking at each other and you know. What do we do now? Yeah, yeah. Play get out again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was excited about you know the music we could potentially the make. You know, yeah. I, I I loved the music we were making. Like set it off, demonstrate my style, look my way. Were I mean, you know, the riffs that really worked on those records. I mean, that's how I wanted our. Like yeah, that was I got it. a feeling from that. That was like that's how I want this shit to sound. Right. Like that's it. You know. So um, 
that was exciting. That that kept me motivated. Right. And you and, and you and and you and Hoy have complemented each other very well. And I think that that dynamic was also what separated it from like you yeah know, exactly. I, the, the good thing Shane was I wasn't I like wasn't that. alone yeah. doing it. You right. know what I mean? Right. We would not to say that you couldn't you know because you you know have I'd your rather own, not. You have your own you know style that you know you could tell that's Matt Henderson's style, but. but that combo with what Hoya was bringing to the table. Yeah, I mean was, that makes them that makes it better. That makes yeah. it more exciting. That makes it something that uh, you know because we start feeding off each other. And I mean you too. You know I could write a, a riff that I thought was pretty good. And I you know there be there was a few songs where all of a sudden you would just come in with lyrics that just like you had the chorus, you had these verses. It's like damn that that's it. I mean that is exactly how it's supposed to sound. Cool, you know. So, <laughs> I, I love you. I love you too, buddy. I couldn't. I couldn't write lyrics and sing. Lyrics well, no, you I could though. I was so I was glad that you could. Uh, now, uh, all right. Now let me. All right. Now, let's let's go along a little bit more. So, all right, we're writing these first couple of records, right? So, yeah. I know along with you, we were never sure about what the next when the next record was coming. Every record was like, we never planned records in advance. Cause I remember every record, not sure, nah, not it, sure, it, being we were gonna be a band, you yeah. know. I were, I always thought you were gonna go to school. This right. gonna do something. Somebody's right. gonna do something every record. Right now, w- you eventually end up leaving, leaving the band. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we want to know why. <clears throat> you know, what was a cer- any certain situation? You know. um, where you were at and you know what was the final draw making you exit <sighs> that you're was already a- fast yeah I hear you you already fast forwarded that much huh damn what about all the great years of touring and oh, breaking man. ground and going to europe yeah, and suffering and playing to 20 people and then <laughs> uh, then next thing you know playing dynamo festival and being uh, shocked because you, yeah. we had only played shitty little yeah. clubs and yeah. I mean, we really paid some dues, man, didn't we? Yep. I mean, we, yep. you know, not not trying to sound like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, but it was, For sure. it was some, yeah, it was some, yeah. it was some yeah. shit. I mean, was, you know, the connection uh, to AF was great. It's always a great thing, you know. And but the, the, it, the it, didn't, too, it didn't, it didn't, you know, but, make us a million dollars or no. put us in front of a gazillion people. I mean, it's, it's hardcore music at the end of the day, you know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but, 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 but we had some great years, Maddie. Right? I mean, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I mean. I think it's it's proof in the fact that we're still friends to this day. Absolutely. Right? And that's what bugs me out. Like, a lot of these bands, or these bands, like, there's so many bands out there that after, like, one guy leaves or the band breaks up or who knows what, there's so much beef. Yeah. And it's, like, all, you know, people publicly dissing each other and writing books about each other. And yeah. The, Weird I'm shit. like, were you guys never, ever actually, like, like, could you imagine being in a band where you were just, yeah, like, you know. All business. I mean, you know, we were like, we were having fun on the road. We, you know, yeah. we were like family traveling together yeah. that like, you know. Well, him and I met on a friendship level even right before he was in the band. Yeah. And then like, you know, I was hanging out with you guys with AF and we were boys. Like you and I would have beers and. And even even outside of that, like, like I'd, before, I'd be at your you family's know. house, you know. Yeah. We, you know, you we, ate at we my knew each other's house. families and, yeah. you know, it's just like. So I mean, but I think that that separates us from a lot of people in a way. You know, I think Mad, I think Madball specifically, and AF too. I think that kind of came yeah. from AF, AF. But AF had a couple of weirdo lineups yeah. and, and shit here and there. But I think that you know the family thing, that family vibe was always there. And, and Mad with Madball especially, I think with every line. I mean, like like you said, like your your family. You know what I mean to us. Same with Will. We were just with Will in upstate. Right. Will's our brother. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, these yep. are friendships. We were just with Craig in Europe. Like, these yep. are friendships that are never going to go away no matter where we are in our yeah. lives, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that's, not everyone's like that, you know? But, <laughs> what was the situation? That, <clears throat> there was a lot that happened in between. And we're actually running out of um, um, um battery time. <laughs> And um, a lot of shit going on. No, but so you know, there's definitely gonna be a part two because there's also we could be here for days because there's a lot of stuff that happened in those early days, which we're definitely gonna what was your time? hit just, back just again. Before, just before you, you you say whatever you gotta say, what was it? So ninety two to ninety, I think early no late ninety seven. Not ninety eight. It might I might have made it. Yeah, no, it was ninety eight because I was twenty eight. 
Now, I, now, I, well, 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 now, real quickly, just and and honestly, you could tell people what was where the band was at that time that. Because we were in a crazy place, yeah, and it was a big reason for yeah. your exit. But re- uh, you know, real quickly, you could tap in on. It was crazy. It was it was really crazy. I mean, I I want to say you had a uh, don't you have a, a episode coming up talking about Tijuana? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was on that was on that tour. Yeah, um, you, you know, I, I, it, it was a combination of of me. Where you were in your life. Where I was in my life or yeah. where I thought I was supposed oh, to be. Because you were married at the time. Where I thought I was supposed to be in my life. Right. Yeah. Right? Um, and not to say at 28, you're, you know, I mean, that's, yeah, it's not old, and, yeah. you know, in the, in the grand like then, scheme yeah. of things. But, like, I just didn't feel like I had established myself or, you know, I mean, it was hard. Yeah. We would be, on, one of the things, it was kind of a mind fuck for me. Yeah. We're on this, we're signed to a label. I mean, we were legitimate professional musicians. Right. No matter how you slice it, that's what we were. We were? I mean... So trying to figure that out, are we? Are we're signing contracts, musicians? going into professional no, no, yeah, recording no, yeah, studios. Sure, 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 I get you it. You know, it's... it's And uh, there was always a hope that maybe, you know, not like I wanted to fucking be like the next Van Halen, but... No. Can just fucking, comfortable. Can we get yeah. paid here? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, can, yeah. Can, can we make you know? something? And I believed yeah. in the music where I thought enough people should be responding to it. What the fuck? You know, yeah. I, I can't get up on stage and promote this if I didn't believe in it. I did. Of course. Um, and there were other bands that I thought, I mean, what? Are, how come we don't seem to click in the same way to this wider audience than some of these guys do? Right. But whatever. Uh, it wasn't exactly it is playing out that still way. Still to this day, man, it's frustrating. And, yeah. and uh, so that was a problem for me, always still coming home and not, and then like struggling for money. Yeah. Um, which we always did. I mean, we, we how many odd jobs did. did we all yeah. have in between, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know... And yeah, the Tijuana madness was uh, at its peak. <laughs> I was out of my mind. I, I got to take some. I got to. I got to. <clears throat> well, take some responsibility here too. I don't. I. I think that tour was the straw that broke the camel's back. As I, they that, say. I mean, I, I, that that look, wasn't. The, that wasn't. I'm, I mean, that was just a crazy, insane environment. What? It was one thing after another. Debauchery. This. That. It was just. It was just insane. So I don't I mean, blame you. I always say well, I don't blame you for well, that being your last tour because, like, you are already considering moving on because you were in a different situation than we were. Yeah. You were in a different place. You were older. You were in there, a different were a place in your my, life. You know, you, know? you had said how you were never sure if we were going to be a band each record. Yeah. So I think we, we wrestled with that as people. Willie wrestled with yeah. it more than me because he quit first. Yes, he did. Uh, wow, that's right. 96, right? 96 yeah. or 7. Yeah. That's crazy. To Bunch think. of quitters. And and when he did that, <laughs> it wasn't like, oh, I got to quit too, but yeah. it was kind of like, Well, he wow, was going to school, wasn't we're, he? We're getting, we're getting to that point now. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. You know, so that was that was difficult. That had always he was also my engaged mind. and like so, thinking so was, about going back to It was a combination of me dealing with life and uh, sh- shit was hectic Insanity. with the band for a little. Yeah. While. I mean, you know, remember going out. We were in a bad way with uh, and having Interpol come up, yeah. <laughs> come yeah. up to us every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Interpol was you know, like the equivalent I, that, of the that, FBI that, in Europe. Uh, kids, I think my, my don't mess with them. My. Uh, my chain had been rattled just enough where I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were like, guys no. on the there were guys on the run that were affiliated there were, associated with us. There were and there things were happening times left I thought and right. If you know, you know, yeah. I, I have I can I can start to think about things and worry to the point where I'm I'm off on the next yeah level before we even got through. You know, I'm at thinking of version nine when yeah we're, we're not even, even at two through two, yeah. through eight. Uh, but it wasn't impossible. No, no. Like I it wasn't out of the I really believe that that we were heading down a path where someone was going to really get in some serious trouble. Yeah, and I could have been part of it just through association. Guilty by association, which you know, is what we call that tour. And, ironically enough, and, we, and, we uh, end up calling it. You know, it was never a judgment. It was just no. like I don't think I should be continuing. That's all. Yeah. It you was. A, it, it was definitely a real Sorry, crazy man. time. Sorry, we put you no, in, no, 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 in our no, no. life, and I believe this. I believe God does things for a reason. I'm saying God because I believe in God. And if you don't believe in God, that's your business, your energy, you know, 10 arm God, whatever you believe in, the Martians, whatever it is. But I believe things happen for a reason. I agree. And I see you got a beautiful family. And that's what you were supposed to have. Yep. You know, so that, that, that 
was supposed to have happened, and I'm glad it worked out the way it did that. We didn't, again, like you said, we didn't end up having beef with each other. Like, you know, and, and yeah, hatred for shit that we did for fun, yeah. and that ended up, um, was never meant to be a business plan. That's ended right. Ended up becoming a business. We were friends first. And businesses yeah, yeah, ruined. Always. Had chem- Luckily, we had chemistry yep. and made some great albums together. And, and he's pretty cute. You know, he's blonde. Let everybody know he's blonde. He got various- green yeah. eyes. Are they green or fuchsia? Is that fuchsia? <laughs> It's blue, baby blue. blue. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to say is um, now you're living out in the West Coast. Yep. I know you're working. You got yep. your family. Yep. Tell us a little bit. Music. Yeah, you're still doing a little you bit of the music. Yeah. Just this year. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that Let everybody fun. know what you're he doing might now. Be doing another one <laughs> next year. He doesn't know yet, but I'm gonna talk to him off air about that. Yeah, we <laughs> might have style. a we we, we might have a little um special things we might be trying to work out, and maybe Europe we could work it out, and maybe Europe could have some fun. And we just we didn't say nothing, yeah. but we're saying something. Same, same. But um, real quick, why don't you let you know? Everybody know what you're doing now with the new band, you know, what you've done real quick and anything you want to shout out, you know, any um, West yep. Coast fam. Yeah, doing the, you know, the family. Yeah. Uh, couldn't which be happier. Most in, which is yeah. more important, yeah. the most important thing for her. Could not be know. happier. That's I got number a, one. I got a beautiful wife and three amazing sons. Yeah. Agreed. Man. And Wonderful everybody's family. happy and healthy and, you know, yeah, it's a good thing. Um, I do have a regular job. And it's uh, keeping me afloat. Yeah. Uh, the eulogy. Tell us about that. The eulogy. Yeah. That's what we want to know. The, the eulogy is uh, a group of friends. Right. You know? right. Uh, which, Back to that. Started that yeah, way. And yeah. Which circle, is really, right? you know, I mean, I, I'm not doing it because I need to get up on stage and play music and be a band. I'm doing it because I love music and I like hanging out with my friends. And that's yeah. why we do this thing called the eulogy. Right. And uh, we're taking our time. What style is it? Hardcore, you know, it's got a little bit of a metal sound compared to some of the other bands out there right now, I think, just because we tuned down real low. But go check them out. You could probably find this stuff also on YouTube. He's going to be Download playing it. AF too. Yeah, we're playing, like playing it with AF and Alex is in, yeah, in December. Yeah. There you go. And um, definitely look out Here for them. Moments. And I know you tell me, you guys here and there, you, you get together whenever you can and try to make, st- you know, music happen. And um, we also want to shout out Dougie and. Um, What's it called? Long what Beach was United. Long, Long Beach United, United Boxing, Boxing Club. Right. He's teaching Maddie how to throw a punch because uh, we're going to put Maddie into the ultimate fighting challenge. <laughs> right. We're signing him up for the, yeah. <laughs> the seniors division. Yeah. But um, I'm going against Ronda Rousey. A- a- anybody before we leave? Before we leave, anybody want to shout out? We're gonna we're gonna continue one in the future where we're gonna go. We're gonna I want to I want to fo- I want to focus on to this guy on that trip with us. We'll, we'll have some, we'll uh, there's a couple of different shit. tours and stuff I want to focus on. So we're gonna be doing different um episodes like, like you know that. I like cat, our catalog. We're trying to catalog this podcast thing in a different way. But anybody you want to shout out before we leave? Tell the people. Uh, any last Matt Henderson uh, messages to the world out there? Shout out to Matt Ball. Uh, Carrying the, waving the flag still, proudly, doing the thing. I mean, I you know, like I said, this band, you know, heart and soul was put into this band. And you guys, I mean, it's great. I, I'm so happy I, I you guys still, still do, do you it. Proud. You do. And that, <laughs> that, that I get to come and see you guys on a regular basis. And play with even us. It's, and play with you. Yeah. Um, you know. I'm glad that people out there still recognize and respect it. Cause yeah, man. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to The Hub. Shout out to Matt Henderson. Shout out to Big Chris. Sh- p- helping put on this show today in Long Beach. Shout out to Chris Powerhouse. Everybody, all our West Coast family for helping us out. Um, again, support the web the webpage. Look out for us. And um, well, to the next time, we out.